Welcome back. Did you miss me? The very first video of 2022. Folks, this is Yes Chef, and I'm your humble host as always, Big Chef Dro. So, what better way to bring the new year in than this right here? You saw the thumbnail. Now, it's a little intricate in preparation, but very easy in execution. Come on in, family. Let's start the new year's off right. Let's cook. Okay, welcome back. Let's go ahead and go over all of these ingredients. Uh, so I don't really know where to start. So let me, let me start here, start with the sourdough. So, you know, What's San Francisco without sourdough? So we're gonna go ahead and make a uh, compound butter. I got two sticks of butter. I got some really finely, finely minced garlic. And then I have some fresh chopped uh, Italian uh, 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 flat leaf parsley that's gonna go in the butter along with uh, some salt as well. I'm gonna put some salt in there and uh, we're gonna toast up that uh, the sourdough for some toast to be dipping inside of that uh, that chipino, that fish stew. So let's go over uh, the aromatics real quick. So I have one large Vidalia onion, and you can use white onion, you can use yellow onion. I just chose to use the Vidalia, one large whole onion chopped up in there, and then I have one whole pepper. Uh, but what I did was I, I got a slice from a an orange, a yellow, a red, and a green bell pepper. So one slice of all those equals up to one whole uh, bell pepper. So I just figured to put you know put the different colors in there, different flavors. Uh, then I have two stalks of celery. Now uh, most chipino recipes will tell you to put uh, fennel in there. I, I'm I'm not trusting that flavor. Uh, with this dish, so I'll go ahead and do the celery, and that's two stalks. Uh, this is just a lot of uh, roughly chopped garlic. I don't know how much is in there, but I'm going to use every last bit of it because I love the taste of garlic. Um, if I was to say, I'd say a little over a quarter of a cup, maybe. Uh, if you want to use less or, or more, that's on you. So I have about two tablespoons of tomato paste here that we're going to use. And then I have about a teaspoon, or, or I'm sorry, not a teaspoon, a tablespoon or so of uh, uh, crushed red peppers. If you don't want to use crushed red peppers, don't use them. Uh, but I'm going to put it in here. Um, most, most recipes call for some type of heat, and, and so that's what we're going to do. If you want to put more, put more. Now, for our herbs, I have uh, fresh chopped basil. I have some fresh chopped oregano. Uh, some recipes use dry oregano and not even any basil, but I'm gonna use both and I'm gonna use some fresh oregano, okay? And then uh, I have three bay leaves there as well. Of course, the salt, I have coarse salt and I have regular table salt and I'll explain to you why I have the two different ones uh, later on. Then I have eight ounces of the Snow's clam juice. That Snow's is a good brand. Uh, so we got eight ounces of that clam juice. And then we have a pound of shrimp. So these are the 1315. If you don't have to get the 1315, you can get smaller ones if you want. I just wanted to do that. You know, it, it's a better plate presentation if you ask me. Um, but 1315 simply means it's 13 to 15 shrimp in each pound of shrimp that you get at this size, okay? Uh, then I have some calamari. Now, I like to cut my calamari uh, pretty thick. Um, I don't like the uh, really small rings. I like them like this. You know, this is, this is, this is right where I like to be. So I, I kept a hold one here, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did that. So what I do is, um, I'll cut the tip of it off to open it up and you can leave it in there. You can discard it or whatever. And then I just cut it in half. You know, if you want them a little small, that's fine. That's it's, you know, it's your chipino. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but that's how I do it. Now, this is a pound, but within that pound comes the, ten the tentacles. 
<laughs> I had a hard time saying that. So the tentacles are a part of that pound. Now, I love tentacles when they're fried. I'm not, not going to put these tentacles in this particular dish. I don't want it to, you know, offset someone from, from eating it, looking at the tentacles and all their splendid glory. So we'll leave these out. I'll just probably take these later on and fry them up and eat them as a snack. All right. So we also have some Pinot Grigio, you know, Italian dish. Got to use some Italian wine. So we got the Pinot Grigio. Now, um, I, I have heard that you can use red wine. I'm not going to do that. I, I feel it would probably taste too much like a, I don't know, like a like a red sauce or something. And I just I don't want that flavor. And then I have a uh, full quart, uh, four cups or one quart of fish stock. OK, you can use seafood stock. You can use shrimp stock. I'm going to use uh, this fish stock. And you can make it as flavorful as you like. Of course, it's it's going to have some salt in it. So, you know, proceed with caution when it comes to that. Um, so I like, a, you know, I like it to be pretty bold um, and I will cut corners on the salt in other places if need be. OK, now um, let's go over the other proteins. So I have a pound of Dungeness crab. So what I did was I just took them apart, um, took all the legs apart, you know, and we're going to put these in there just like this. And uh, I guess you can use snow crabs if you want, or, you know, maybe, maybe some keen crab. I don't know. Who knows? I'm going to use these Dungeness. All right. So uh, moving right along, we have our clams. Now, uh, these clams are fresh. Uh, just bought them this morning. And uh, what you want to do when you get these clams, you want to make sure that they're obviously that they're closed and they're not opened up. They don't have any holes in them. And what you want to do is you want to take each one of them one by one, inspect them. And while you do that, you want to wash all that dirt and that grit off of your clams. You don't want that grit and that dirt to get off in your food and you'll be tasting that stuff. So wash them off really, really good. OK, now when you go to cook these, these should open up. If you cook them and they stay closed, that means they are dead. They died before they actually got able, got, uh, was able to cook and you discard those. That will get you really sick if you don't. OK, so don't don't cook clams and then try to eat the ones that are closed after you cook them. OK, they should open up fully. Same thing with the mussels. Now, I couldn't find any good sized mussels uh, fresh. So I went and brought some frozen ones. All I did was I got the frozen ones, opened it up, you know, washed them, looked at them because uh, in a lot of these frozen ones, the shells are broken and a lot of the shells are within the other muscles. So you got to be careful to clean that so you don't have to bite down on any shells. OK, so now also in those packages, you'll you'll find some of the muscles are closed. Why? They're not good. They, they died before they were able to get cooked. And so they never open. You want to discard those as well. OK, so these are fully cooked. So they're all the way open and there's nothing wrong with getting frozen. There's nothing wrong with getting fresh. It is what it is. If you can't find them, then, you know, do your thing. So uh, on to the cod. Now, uh, I got the cod. You can also use halibut. You can also use haddock. Uh, I, I I'm going to use this cod and it's fresh cod. Don't buy frozen cod for this. Don't do that. Uh, just get you some, find you some fresh cod somewhere. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure you can find it. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, season that and we're going to sear that off and we'll talk about that at that time. OK, now my tomatoes, I have a whole can. This is uh, 28 ounces, uh, but I have the San Marzano tomatoes. These are the good ones. These are, are less acidic and more sweet. Uh, these are a treasure to find. I was actually very fortunate to find some because it's it's really hard to find San Marzano's uh, sometimes. And then I'm going to use some tomato puree. I don't know how much I'm going to use, but I'm going to use some. Um, but we'll figure that out when we get there. Um, OK, I think that is everything. If I miss something, I'll let you know. So uh, let's get on with it, folks. Let's go ahead and let's cook. <laughs> All right, family, so let's go ahead and get this compound butter out of the way so we can get it back in the fridge so that it can harden back up. 
just go ahead and put all of that in there. Let's get some of this flat leaf parsley. And then we'll do some coarse, we'll do some coarse kosher salt in there as well. Now, I was supposed to pull out some salted butter, but I totally forgot. Whenever you're doing compound butter, one of the better butters to, to do it with is salted butter, because then you don't have to add anything. You don't have to add anything to it. But my mistake, we'll just work with this. So we can shape this now. Put that down there. All right, so now you got you a nice little form. You can just go ahead, stick this in the refrigerator, let it solidify. All right, family, so I'm just gonna uh, crush up these uh, tomatoes with my hands. Now, you can use a food processor, um, or you can use one of those, um, like a potato masher. But then that just creates something else for you to wash. So. I'm just gonna do it by, by hands and you can do it the way you wanna do it. All right, folks, so we're ready. Get you some uh, olive oil off in here. Let's get these, let's get these onions off in here. Now, I'm cooking on medium, all right? I'm cooking all of this on medium. Get that off in there. Then let's get the celery off in there as well. We'll throw a little salt in there to kind of help it out. Help it sweat a little bit. A couple of pinches. Now, I'm putting the onion and the celery off in here first uh, because they usually take... It, it usually takes the longest to get that bite out of the onion. And of course the celery is hard and we want to kind of get that softened up before we put everything in there. Uh, if you don't, you know, you'll wind up, because this isn't going to cook long. This isn't going to cook long at all. You'll wind up having very crunchy, very crunchy uh, celery, okay? So we're going to let this sweat off and we'll be back. All right. so. Let's go ahead and get these bell peppers off in there. We'll mix these up and we'll let these, uh, we'll let all of this cook together for about another five minutes maybe, and then we'll be back. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put the garlic in there. And we're going to let this garlic saute off in here. We don't have to, we're not going to have to worry about it burning uh, because we have everything in there. It's releasing uh, a lot of its moisture. So the garlic is good to go for a while. You don't really have to hurry up and get other things in there. So we'll cook this off for about another five minutes as well. All right, folks. So let's go ahead. Now, be careful with this one. This is this is going to release some stuff. You're going to cough. Your nose will probably run. So uh, be very careful with it. Put those crushed red peppers off in there. Kind of stand back. I'll let this cook off for a minute or so. Now let's get this tomato paste off in there. Now we're going to let this cook until we start seeing some fawn down on the bottom. As you can see, starting to get that goodness on the bottom. That's what we're looking for. Let it go, let it go a little while longer. All right, so we've accomplished what we came to accomplish. Now, with the Pinot Grigio, 
we'll just go ahead and deglaze and it really doesn't make a difference uh, how much you're using here. There's no really exact measurements. Um, yes, we are adding flavor, uh, but you know, the real deal is to get this, all these, all this flavor off the bottom. I'll just pour the rest of that in there. No big deal. Now we're going to go ahead and let the alcohol cook off of that. Um, so we'll give it, we'll give it a couple of minutes, maybe two or three minutes. Kind of let all these, uh, let all these flavors get married together. Okay, so we're back. The uh, alcohol has cooked off. This has been in here a few minutes. It smells amazing. So let's go ahead. Let's get the uh, tomatoes in here first. Then I'm just going to pour... I'm gonna pour a little bit. I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna eyeball it. Just a little bit. All right, not too much. So just a little bit off the top is what I poured in there. Let's go ahead and get the clam juice in here. Then the fish stock. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, first. I'm going to take this off this off of this burner and put it on my stove, and then I'm going to leave the top off until it comes up to a simmer. Once it starts to simmer, I'm going to put the top on, um, turn it down to low or medium low, and I'm going to let it cook with the top on for about 35, 40 minutes. Okay, so so it's it's on medium now. I'm going to put it on medium on the stove. Let it come up to a simmer, put the top on, turn, uh, turn the heat down to about a medium low and let it cook for about 35, 40 minutes. OK, so we'll be back when that's ready. All right, fam. So um, we have the cod ready. Now, I've put some kosher salt, some coarse kosher salt on there. And some fresh cracked pepper, but I didn't put the salt uh, on there until I was ready to to cook it. Uh, there's a reasoning for that. Okay. Cod is a very, um, cod is a very, uh, cod is a fish that carries a lot of water. If you put the salt on there and let it sit, it's going to draw out the moisture. Now you should do that if you plan on frying the cod, but we're not frying the cod. We're just simply searing it. And in this instance, we want to undercook this. So we're going to put it in the pan upside down and we're going to Cook it on one side for about 60 seconds according to how thin or how thick it is. This is a thin piece, so that's when, this, one is going to get, um, this one is going to get done a lot faster because we, this is a very delicate fish once it cooks. Cod will break right in your hand after it cooks. And so uh, when, you're dealing, when you're dealing with it that way, you want to make sure you undercook it because remember it's going to go into the fish broth or the fish stew as well. Okay, so about 20 seconds on this side and then we'll be done with it. Now I'm using a um, nonstick pan instead of my chef's pan because if I use my chef's pan, I'm going to have to abide by the rules of letting it sit there until it, un until it releases from the pan. And I don't want to keep this cod in this pan that long again I'm undercooking it okay so once I take it out put it on a sheet pan with a, with a, a cooling rack and you may say why don't you want any of this uh, fond or any of this this delicious flavor because I already have enough fish flavor in the fish stock already 
plus we're going to be adding the seafood in there. There is a such thing as doing too much, okay? So uh, I'm going to get this out of the way, and when we come back, we're going to go ahead and uh, sear off the scallops as well. Okay, folks, let's go ahead and get these uh, scallops done. I'm going to use some truffle oil for this, okay? Now, uh, I don't have time to go over the do's and the don'ts of, of scallops. Um, just know that I do have a video breaking down the rules on how to cook a scallop. And I will pin that up top. Now I'm just using regular uh, table salt for this and we're gonna use uh, some black pepper. We're gonna uh, open it up a little bit so it's not so fine. Now, I'm not gonna cook all of these in a pan because some of these are very small. And what I'll do is I'll just put them into the broth with, um, with everything else when I, get, when I get ready to do that. So we're gonna get this pan to smoking and we'll be back. All right, we're ready to go. Let's start putting these bad boys on. Now, I'm only going to sear one side. Why? I don't want to cook it all the way because remember it's going in the fish broth. So only one side is needed. But that sear is gonna give it a nice little presentation. And you don't have to sear it. You could just drop them off into the broth if you want. That'll be fine too. And we'll put these right with the fish so they can kind of drain off as well. All right. All right, we'll be back folks. All right, so we have the compound butter ready. It has solidified enough. Don't want it too hard, it might break or uh, tear the bread. All right, family, have all the bread nicely buttered. We're gonna stick this in the oven at 425 degrees. Um, I think it'll take somewhere around maybe 10, uh, 10, 12, maybe 15 minutes, but I'll let you know exactly how long it takes. So we'll be back. All right, so I'm gonna put some of these clams off in there. Uh, not all of them, maybe a dozen or so. It's four, six, eight, ten. Let's do 12 of them. And, and listen, you, you don't really want to overcrowd this. And you can always, whatever is left over, you can always go back and add them, heat it up and add the uh, clams or mussels. Uh, to, to whatever you have left over. I don't really want to crowd this up. And so let's go ahead and get these mussels off in there since they're already cooked. It's not gonna make too much of a deal. It's just gonna give it, give it a lot of, lot of flavor. That's too small. Get the big ones. Okay, so I got some of those off in there. I'm going to cover this up, let this cook for about five minutes, and let those clams open up. All right, family. So uh, we had some, uh, some uh, technical difficulties with the, uh, with the video after we got finished cooking the clams and the mussels. So here's what, uh, here's what happened after that. Once the clams opened up, I went ahead and put everything else in, the crab, the shrimp, the calamari. Uh, the shrimp was the last thing to go in. Once I put the shrimp in, I actually turned it off. I turned the, um, I turned the burner off, and then I uh, gently placed the fish on top. I didn't stir it in or anything. I just placed it on top, and... Uh, put the um, put the uh, scallops in there 
and the, the scallops that we seared off, I put them on top with the, um, with the fish as well. And I haven't stirred it yet. I haven't stirred it yet. So we're going to go ahead and get ready for the plate presentation. All right. And I'm going to show you something else, too. I'm going to I'm going to do something else for you, too, to show you something. Uh, another way to eat this dish as well. OK. All right, folks. So here is the plate presentation for the stew. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something that might that you might be interested in. So I'm going to put a little bit of this puree in here. All right. So got that off in there. Let me put some other things off in there. All right. So just to make it a, just to make it thick, I'm pouring this puree in here. It's making a mess all over the place. And then I will put this sauce on top of this. All right, family. So here is both of the presentation for this. I think you'll enjoy the one with the pasta as well. So uh, you know what time it is. Let's go ahead and get ready for this taste testing. All right, family, I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of this parsley on top. All right, family, let's go ahead and go on in with this taste testing. Smells so good. Smells and absolutely amazing. Go ahead and dip this bread in here first. Mm. Wow. Man. A little bit of this fish. Mm. 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 Get one of these clam. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. Might as well try one of these mussels too, huh? Man, this is this is absolutely amazing. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. Go ahead and dig into this, to this pasta as well. I'm just gonna have a little different taste because we put some puree in there, but I think it should be fine. Go ahead and get some of that. Get one of these shrimp. Mm, 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 mm. Wow, a big old scallop. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Look here, folks. If you've never had a fish stew, this, this is what you need to be getting with. So I know it was a little bit long in explanation, uh, but I had to get that information out to you. Again, this is not an entertainment channel. This is a cooking channel. And so when I cook, I want to explain things to you in great detail. And if you don't like it, don't watch. <laughs> Shout out to all the trolls who always say that I take too long explaining things. Ah, whatever. So, folks, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And if you got any value out of what you've just seen, go ahead and do me a favor. Hit the like button. 
And if this is your first time watching, I want to welcome you and I want to thank you as well for also watching. And you can go ahead and hit that like button too. And if you want to become a member of this channel, come on, you know what you got to do. Hit the subscribe button. And don't forget, hit the notification bell. That'll ensure that you're up to date on everything that we come out with here on Yes Chef. So folks, that's it. I want to thank you for taking your time out with me. Did you miss me? <laughs> so folks, we're going to get out of here until the next video, until the very next time we see you folks. As always, family, peace.